This is the inside of a ray dome, playfully called golf balls by Space Force Guardians. These ray domes house satellite dishes that help Guardians detect incoming missiles sent by foreign adversaries, a crucial piece of equipment that has saved hundreds of American lives. It was the largest ever ballistic missile attack on Americans. On January 8, 2020, Iran fired missiles at the Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq, where 2,000 American troops were stationed. Our troops right here at Buckley were able to detect the missiles and then report the specific areas at risk at Al-Assad and afford the troops on the ground the opportunity to escape and get out of the way. And as a result, nobody died. Since its inception in 2019, the United States Space Force has quickly become a crucial component of the U.S. military. But many Americans still don't understand what exactly this branch does. I like the idea of a Space Force. I mean, I don't know if we need it, and I'm sure there are better ways we could spend our money, but it sounds awesome. It really does. In reality, Space Force Guardians work from bases on the ground to help protect assets up in space. There's a possible event in Sector 52. Insider was granted access to Buckley Space Force Base in Aurora, Colorado, to see how Guardians detect incoming missiles and to learn more about the newest branch in the U.S. military. Originally, my plan was to go Air Force, but when I gave my job list to my recruiter, he's like, hey, all these jobs are either being transferred or are currently in the Space Force. Would you like to essentially switch from Air Force to Space Force? I immediately was like, yep, switch me. All enlisted Space Force Junior Guardians start their career at Lackland Air Force Base. That's because the Space Force recently split off from the Air Force, creating the sixth official U.S. military branch. So we transitioned uh, from the Air Force to a Space Force to put that level of focus from a programmatic resourcing and manpower perspective, because at the end of the day, when it comes to the protection of the space domain, uh, that focus is imperative. After basic military training, junior guardians begin their specialized classroom training in a program called STARCOM. Once I was done with basic, they immediately sent me over to Vandenberg. From there, we learned everything fundamental we needed to learn from space training, from satellites to, to telescopes to simple stars. Guardians move on to more hands-on training when they arrive at their assigned mission Delta. A Space Delta is a Space Force organization that is um, assigned a particular uh, mission area. Within the Space Force, the Operations Wing, or Space Operations Command, has nine mission deltas, each with a different focus. For example, Space Delta 6, known as Cyber Delta, focuses on cybersecurity. From GPS to making payments on your credit cards to making phone calls to communicating with anybody in the world, all of that comes down to what we have available in space. And if that's, those space assets are contested uh, by adversaries or whatnot, uh, we lose that ability to function at our peak performance. The largest delta, Space Delta IV, is headquartered here at Buckley Space Force Base. So Space Delta IV's mission, per se, is to be able to uh, protect, to guard against missiles, uh, missile attacks launched against the United States, our allies, as well as deploy troops worldwide. At Buckley, junior guardians do on-the-job training for three months in a mission management course. And we'll just drill them with different experiences, different lessons, and we'll have them conduct operations on the simulator. The simulator at Buckley uses real-life scenarios to train guardians. Due to the sensitive nature of the mission, we were not permitted to film the screens, which could reveal top secret areas of interest. But we were allowed to document a training session from an approved vantage point. There is a possible vent in Sector 52. We are being trained to be the first line of defense. We are learning how to correctly and accurately collect and identify the systems any of our adversaries could be throwing at us. To detect incoming missiles, Delta IV uses a space-based infrared system, or SIBRS, 11 satellites in space that orbit around either the equator or poles and scan Earth's surface for heat anomalies. That infrared data is sent down from the satellites to these giant ray domes, 
which house satellite dishes that are strategically pointed at areas of interest around the world. Infrared data is presented in a way on our, on our display panels, if you will. Missile launch confirmed. Impact area located in Sector 42. Junior Guardians call authorities to inform them of possible events so they can alert the targeted areas. 52, how copy? This is Vortex out. There's a lot of pressure, but they also teach us how to do it correctly and as calmly as possible. Uh, make sure we speak up a little bit, but great job uh, getting confirmation of the missile launch. And finally, outstanding getting the information out to our uh, allies and partners, making sure that they were on the same page with us. Do you guys have any questions? After Junior Guardians have finished their mission management training, they can begin their job on the operations floor. Due to the operations floor's 24-7 active role in missile detection, cameras are rarely allowed. But we were able to observe a couple of Guardians as they kept watch over the radars. What we do impacts uh, almost everyone in their day-to-day -day lives, whether they're here, whether they're downrange, like, it's life or death. The mission is accomplished by the young men and women sitting at the operations floor. And, and we put a lot of uh, trust uh, and a lot of responsibility on these folks because we have trained them to be that good. Right now in stage training, I'm still a little nervous because I am not fully confident in myself, but I know eventually later on in training, I will be able to do good on the ops floor. Space Force is the president's boldest idea that he got from a Buzz Lightyear Happy Meal toy. <laughs> when the Space Force was first announced, it became the subject of late night punchlines. There's even a Netflix series poking fun at the branch. The president is creating a new branch, Space Force, <laughs> which Mark will run. <laughs> what? The show provides a framework of notional Hollywood ideas of what the uh, organization is about. A lot of these misperceptions is just a lot of unknowns and curiosity about what Space Force is. When in reality, the Space Force was created uh, out of the recognition that space is so important to a way of life that it deserves to be protected. The Space Force also gets confused with its civilian counterpart, NASA. So NASA uh, being our exploration as well as scientific branch of, of the government, they're looking out uh, beyond the stars, trying to look out, uh, get all that scientific data, as well as looking at manned missions on the Space Force side, uh, looking more inwardly, uh, making sure that we're, we're looking terrestrially uh, to help our uh, ground forces, air forces, as well as our allies and partners. People constantly ask us, or if they see me in uniform and I'm a Space Force uniform, they're like, oh, have you been to space? Like, when's, when's the last time you've been to space? Uh, there's actually very few operators that do go to space. Uh, lucky for them, uh, what we do is operate all of our assets within space. The Space Force is constantly growing and evolving. On August 4th, 2022, right before our visit to Buckley, the Space Force launched GEO-6, the sixth Sibbers geosynchronous Earth orbit satellite, into space. Our success is not so much what we do to an adversary. Our success is more measured in terms of what an adversary does not do to us because we stand guard. This job is 24-7. It is something that is necessary, and our mission does not stop no matter what. How copy? This is Vortex out.